good. And you have maintained that even today. We are your creatures. We have been created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are created anew for good works that God purposed beforehand that we should walk in them. Good purposes. Good works. Good agendas. Good values. You purposed good for us when we got born again. You intended good. Yes. And the Bible says Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the demons and the devils because the Lord was with him. Father, we expect something good as a creator. Lord, you are creating something beautiful. Even if there are mountains that we can see, there are valleys, Lord, down the way. But Lord we, Lord, we know that something is going to work out for our good. The scripture has said all the things work out for good for those who are called and, and have been purposed for his calling. We thank you today. We bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, you can have your seats. We have been talking about purpose-driven lives. Is your life purposefully, purposefully lived? You know, uh, repeating it over and over, it gets us to that awareness that we are living for the purpose of God. We have values. We have things that we esteem so, so dear to us. There are things that we esteem, they are very important to our families. Yes, but remember the creator also had a dream when he was creating you. He has that very agenda, that purpose. So we are here to talk about, to mention. Every Sunday when you come here, we remind you. We know you, are there. you, you, you might be aware, but we keep on reminding you that you are living for a purpose of God. The breath that you have is meant that you may pursue and do that purpose that God has on his agenda for you and for your family. Amen. Last uh, Sunday I talked about becoming like a Christ. is one of the ways that through which we can uh, live our purposes fully exploited in the Lord. Becoming like a Christ, there is no way you can fulfill the God agenda for your life without becoming like a Christ. And then I talked about how we grow. Yes. A normal child, when he's born, he grows through stages. You feed the, the child with milk, blessed feeding, or else you can buy some, some other uh, milk such that you can feed this child to grow. So how do we grow? I talked about commitment. There must be commitment, total commitment. Pursuing this calling of God requires commitment about Uganda. Whether you like it or not, it requires total commitment, diligence. Then I talked about also the power to choose. The power to choose in every situation that comes your way. You have that right to choose, to do either good or evil. Power to choose. And I did mention that when the devil uh, deceived Adam and Eve, he took over the power of choice of man. We are all destined for destruction, for death. He was leading us. He was taking us to hell without anybody stopping him because he had the keys, he had the right to do that. He had taken over the power from a man to choose. But when Jesus, thank God for Jesus' coming, when he came, our Lord, our maker, he brought back that power to choose to us. That power to choose is right now in your hands. That's what you did so many months, some years ago when you took a choice and said, I believe the Lord Jesus to be my Savior and the Lord. And you confessed him and you say, 
I shall not go to hell. My name has been written now in the book of life. So that, that ability to choose was given to you. And those who have not accepted the Lord, they may die of, and they may end up in a doomed, uh, a doomed environment. And they can later on regret. But thanks be to God for you who is here, and those who are coming soon to be born again, they have made a choice, what we call a choice, a quality decision. They have made Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior. That is what, in a brief, we discussed uh, last Sunday. I want to talk about transformed, being transformed by truth. Being transformed by truth. As we are pursuing the God-given call, we are living for the purpose that God intended. Ephesians 2, chapter, verse 10 says, We are God's workmanship, created and new, created afresh in Christ Jesus for good works that we may walk in them. Those good works that God intended, good works that he intended that we should walk in them, it is possible. He doesn't tell us to do things that are impossible because he knows that the power of the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. So we can do these things. We can do good things in the name of the Lord. So, transformed by truth. In the book of John, chapter 17, Jesus was making a prayer to his father. He went and started praying. And he said, the Lord, he said, I have handed over uh, to them the word that you gave me. It's like when we are doing these uh, uh, relays in the primary, you hand over the stick to somebody else and it's also run, 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 and then also he hands it over to somebody else like that until a team wins, okay? So he says, I have handed over to them the word you gave me. I realize that we are handing over the tools, and which tools? Number one is the word of God. I'm here standing to, to give you the tool. I am giving you, I'm handing over to you this word, okay? Jesus is saying, Lord, Father, my Father, I am handing over the word which you gave me. And verse 17, he says, sanctify them by thy truth. Sanctify them. Father, sanctify them. Okay? It was his cry. Sanctify them. Purify them. Purge them. Cleanse them. He was praying to the Father. Looking at the team he's leaving behind. Looking at the work he has done. Those three and a half years. He was pleading with the Father, sanctify them. Beautify them in their character. Purge them, purify them. This word, sanctify, or purging, or whatever, it's like he's saying that they have a, a lot of rotten things, rotten materials in their lives. The thinking, the words they are speaking, the mindset is rotten. Sanctify them. Purify them, Father. You know, you, 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 we can use always uh, uh, detergents here and there to clean up things, either the floor or our clothes, like a soap. You can wash your clothes with soap. To cleanse your clothes. Not so. Jesus is saying, cleanse them. Why do we clean our clothes? Why do we clean our floors? Because they have been dirtened. They are dirty. He was pleading to the Father, sanctify them, my Father. They have taken in 
a lot of garbage, but sanctify them, cleanse them. When I, I look at our community here, you look at men and women in Kakaju here, most of them are, are bent towards drinking. Their mindset, mindset is bent toward speaking negative things, fornication and whatever. This is the community. So I'm not only speaking to you today as the church, but I'm speaking the spirit. I know that the, this is talking about the community that God has sent us to serve into. We are here to serve our community. Just go down in Kakaji, just around this place also. God has placed this church to do this work, sanctifying work. People are bent on different things, or stealing. A person is 40 years, 50 years, but has taken 20 years or so, drinking, ever drinking. You know, he gets born again, but it's like he's bent that way. He's bent in failing experiences. He doesn't think that he, he can do a business and he succeeds. Never. He thinks that way. The Lord is crying to the Father, sanctify them. Put them right. Their minds, sanctify them. Their behaviors. Okay? Somebody is spending time. You see people, they have been born again. Okay. But they, they like, you know, staying, staying around, discussing things that are useless in life. Things that don't add up to, to their development. They are here. We, we can see them in our communities everywhere you are coming from. A person is not mindful of, of keeping time. He doesn't know that spending time in the word or in the presence of God is so important. When the Lord prays this, it's a deep prayer. Sanctify them, Lord. Okay? Come here, as we. Sanctify them. They are not going to serve you if they have not been sanctified. Like for us, some of us here, just you put on, you put on a shirt today or a dress. Tomorrow, you definitely you need to wash it. You need to change some people can stay with the cross <laughs> for two or three days or four days or so. But you see, how do you feel if you put on a cross that you have, you have put on for five days? How do you feel that? The Lord is, is looking at these people with such dirty garments upon them. You know, some of these things are so deceiving. Because when you put on a suit, okay, a nice dress, that's worth a lot of money. And a, 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 a very expensive shoe. And you walk along the street. And everybody say, wow, wow, beautiful. That's beautiful. But you see, when the Lord sees us, the human eyes seeing excellent, beautiful, you know, smart. But Jesus is crying to the Father. That person is here, smart in the natural but he needs to be sanctified. He says, sanctify them, Father. And he says, your word is the truth. Sanctify them by the truth. Knowing that truth is the only mechanism that can sanctify us, Abu Ruganda. This, this, this sanctification comes by the word of God, eh? engaging ourselves into the word of God. Sanctify them through your word. Your word is truth. Your word is what? Your word is truth. Internalizing this word brings a clear mind. You start seeing things the way God sees them. You start reasoning the way God reasons. You start esteeming those things that God esteem. You start demeaning, devaluing those things that God, that's the same. Okay? Praise the Lord. It is a process. 
sanctify them. It was his cry to the Father. These disciples, they need your word. That's why, that's why we need to take much of our time in the word. The devil is a mother. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus told the Jews that for you, you belong to your father, the devil. He's a liar from the beginning. And he says, he's a murderer. Imagine, he's a murderer because he doesn't abide in the truth. He doesn't want the truth. As we continue talking about the truth of God's word, you see, you find a lot of resistance coming in. Before you preach, you find a lot of resistance. Before you get into that session of, of meditation, you find that there is a lot of opposition. Why? Because there is a mother behind. Sometimes you get your Bible and you want to do some notes, reading and studying. You know, you want to take time in the word of God to be sanctified. But you discover that somebody is, 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 is knocking at the door. The very time you have started reading, somebody is knocking. <laughs> and just your neighbor is not going to tell you anything that is in you. It's just in a world. You understand? This person, you welcome that person. He sits there. He spends 40 minutes with you speaking in nothing. And he has cheated your, your time. You understand? You don't see that the murderer was behind this person. The, the Bible says he's a murderer from the beginning. The devil is a murderer. You don't see that you have a lot of programs and they are not, they are not anywhere giving you time to, to have the word in your life. And you spend a month, you spend weeks without this word. You don't see those programs that behind them, there is a murderer. His, his intention is to murder you completely. The devil's agenda is to kill, steal, and destroy completely. You understand? He's a murderer. He's a thief. He's a liar. He doesn't abide in the truth. Jesus is saying, sanctify them by your truth, and your word is truth. It is the word that brings that process of sanctification. Hallelujah. So it, it must be our daily prayer. Lord, sanctify me. Sanctify my thoughts. Sanctify my way of talking. Sometimes we are talking negative, very, very negative. We have bad attitudes. I don't think that will work out. I don't think that somebody will amount, amount up to anything. Negative, speaking negatively. Sanctify us, Lord. Purify us. Let it be our prayer. Every morning, Lord, I pray. Sanctify my mouth. Sanctify, sanctify my, my thoughts. Sanctify what I do. Hallelujah. Jesus was crying to the Father, sanctify them by the truth. And he says, your word is truth. John 17, verse 17. The word sanctifies us. But not a mere, a mere word, just reading. A, it, it is by revelation from God's word. You read, you study, you meditate, and then revelation comes. When the revelation comes, you know, Adam fell from revelational knowledge to informational knowledge. And, you know, it's like everything was okay, but the guy had fallen. So it takes revelation from God's word that we can be sanctified. Amen. God's life creates, God's word creates life. God's word creates faith. God, God's word creates wisdom, brings wisdom, understanding. It produces change. The word of God brings change. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, but you, if you continue in my word, if you continue steadfastly in my word, 
The early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in prayer and in fellowship and in breaking of bread. Acts 2.42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples. If you continue, continue. Continuity is important. Then you shall be my disciples and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall sanctify you. The truth shall set you free. As members of Grace Assembly, as members of the body of Christ anywhere else, as members of this community where God has brought us that we may, may do his purposes, we must know that it is consistency, continuity, day in, day out, that we abide by his word. Praise the Lord. We must also mix the word that has been preached to us with faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 is talking about these Jews. They had been preached of the gospel. The word of God came to them. But the, the writer, whom I suppose to be Paul, says that Incidentally, when they heard the word, they did not mix it with faith. Why? They betrayed the word. They despised the word. Despising God's word. You are despising Jesus. Isaiah 53 says he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow acquainted with grief. And we hid us to our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We are set free. But he was despised and rejected. How much time are we giving this, this Bible? How much time are we, are we committed onto the scripture? Uh, reading or meditating or memorizing. In a way, we are despising Jesus himself because he's a word. Okay? Amen. Amen. Mm. There are five ways through which the word of God comes to us. By hearing, by reading, by studying, confessing or memorizing. And then meditation. These ways are here for us such that we can get the word into our lives. Okay? So we are transformed by truth. We are being cleaned up by truth. Knowing the truth is very, very important. We took in a lot of poison, negative things, wrong belief systems. We are built in us. We are deceived from childhood. That way, when, when, when you, you remove your tooth, you put it somewhere in the hole of, of, of what? Akamese, Hakato. And it will come, it will bring a coin. And we grew knowing that they, 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 they. one time I asked my mom, but he, it's you, our parents, who go and work and get money. Now, oh, where do the, the, the small, eh? Bumese, mese. Eh? <laughs> where do they get money? She told me, when we, we keep the money somewhere, they come at night when we are, we are sleeping and they steal the money. So they give you stolen money. <laughs> I, I, I know most of you, could have had such a statement. But you see, every, every wrong statement, every lie you believed is putting you or me in bondage. So, when Jesus is saying sanctify them, he looks at a lot of those garbages that we grew into 
We are brought up believing things that are not real. Okay? So, so, so this sanctification is a long process. And sometimes it, it takes a while. It's like Solomon, if somebody told you that you are, you are a white, like a grain, you are a white. When you look at your, your, your skin, completely different. Oh, you are like a margarine. Okay? How many years will it take you to believe that you are white? You are born from Fort Potro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your great grand power is there. Just estimate how, how many years it will take you to believe that I'm a white. You know, some of these things will take years. When they tell you, you are rich. And then you, are, you look at the, the environment, you are sleeping in, in a ramshackle house down there in Makerere. You know, it will take you a while to believe the truth. But the truth is that you are rich. You are blessed. Hallelujah. It will take you a while. You didn't answer me. How long will it take? How long will it take you to believe that this is a, a, a white coat? How long? You will struggle with it. You see? So when Jesus was praying, he meant it that these minds, these people's mind, are bent towards deception because they were in the world and the, the world has deceived them. There is a lot of information that, that is going on the TVs, what, what, but those are all lies. I'm not saying everything is a lie, but there are many lies on the TVs and whatever. And the truth comes only from the revealed word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there are sometimes we preachers also, we can preach, we, we can be bad preachers, preaching negative, we are, we are, we are preaching unbelief, like this turn to turn spies. They, they, they are preachers of doom. They are preachers preaching to Israel that this thing is not going to, to work out for us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Things are hard. Preachers of negativity. So it's not, it's not every preacher. That's why you must know what you believe. Okay? Okay? Wanji? Because you are responsible on everything that you believe. You are responsible. You are responsible. I am responsible on what I believe. Some years ago, a professor, Simeon Okayo, was preaching and he said, you people, you, the congregation where prayer mountain, he says, these days, pastors are preaching what is of theirs. Babu eh? Labiabwe. <laughs> <laughs> and the time has come that you may discern that which comes from the Lord and that which comes from what? From the pastor's soul, himself. Then I was asking, how do I do that? I came into the service to listen to a man of God. Anyway, I discovered that I am responsible on whatever I believe. Amen. Okay. We move on. Transformed. By trials. Amen. Transformed by truth. Now you are transformed by what? By trials. James 1 2. He says 2 up to 4. James, the book of James in the New Testament. Chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. He says, Count it joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. It's like he's encouraging us. When you go through trials, it is working for your good. Being positive in every situation is always good about Uganda. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Christ has suffered. First Peter, I know some of you are writing. I don't want to be so speedy. First Peter, I didn't put them here. My laptop this morning when I, I got it, I thought I was going to put down the message there. It didn't work. So, yeah. But here we are. 
First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. Christ suffered leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. We should follow his what? His steps. Chapter 2 verse 21. Christ suffered that we should follow his steps. He left an example for us. We are purged by trials. Amen. Mm. The scripture says all things work out for good for those who love God. And have been called after his own purposes. Those of you who are writing down something, make, write this statement down. The way you think, the way you think determines the way you feel. Mm. The way you think determines the way you feel. And the way you feel, the way you feel influences the way you act. The way you feel influences the way you act or respond. The way you think determines the way you feel. Your feelings are determined by what you think, what your thoughts are. And the, uh, the verse says, as the man thinks in his heart, so he is on the outside. Mm. And the way you feel influences or speaks a lot on the way you act or respond in any given situation. All right. In all our challenges of life, a positive attitude is a key to success. A positive attitude. That's why we need to cultivate this in our lives day by day. That God is good. Irrespective of the challenge the challenges that, that are around me. God is good. Amen. And when you, you wake up in the morning and you are coming for the service, set your to us so, oh, something beautiful, something good is going to happen to me. Something good. Because you don't know what is the day is going to bring forth. I look at Jesus and I always marvel. Because you, you, you are behaving, you are talking, you are teaching, you are acting, things that are going to, to be your legacy. Imagine, you wake up in the morning, you don't know what the day is going to bring forth. You don't know that there is a mountain that is coming before you. That you don't know whether as somebody is going to abuse you. Okay? You don't know whether they are, they are going to give you a bad announcement that your dad is dead. You wake up in the morning not knowing. And yet, the camera is there to track your words to track your deeds, to track the, your behavior. Hey, how about Uganda? Hey? Imagine, because everything you are doing is going to be a lesson to others. Everything you are speaking, mukama <laughs> One time, <laughs> my wife told me, uh, there are these stubborn kids that will we always upbring in the Lord. And he was telling this girl, girl that do A, B, C, D, and he was not doing it. And he said, do this. He was, he was just looking. Do this. He was refusing. <laughs> and, and then she made a statement. He was going, God, you She told me, I didn't know how that statement came out of my mouth. And some other two kids also had the same statement. She said, I, I, I ran into my bedroom and I asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, 
Forgive me of this statement. Forgive me. How did this statement come out of my mouth? You know, the word omusege. Eh? Then she knew she had to come back and call this girl and say, you are not a musege, forgive me. And then she made sure that even others hear that she was repenting over that statement. You understand? She, 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 she cleared the air there. But she was, ask, she was telling me, I don't know how that statement came out of me. Come here, by the way. You see, you don't know what the day is going to bring forth. You don't know what statement you are going to, to throw out of your mouth at a particular situation. You don't know how you are going to respond. You don't know how you are going to behave. Look at Jesus. It's like everything is going to be recorded. What you speak, there are lessons for people to, to, to learn from. What you do, there are lessons people are going to learn from. I mean, every behavior, every way of sleeping, every manner. You, don't, don't you think it is, this Jesus deserves a big, big credit for his behavior? Am I talking to you or no? If Solomon, somebody is, is, somebody is, is sent to, to put a camera, okay? Ay, 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 ay. And people, it's going to be prayed, that camera is going to be, you know, and people are going to take lessons out of that. Wow, 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 wow. I don't, you know. Are you perfect? What about you? Are you perfect? Do you think your behavior? Your responses in, a, in, a, in any given situation, they are going to be lessons for others. You see? That's why Jesus was a great man. Sanctified by trials. Okay? Say with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I may not understand everything in the situations I go in, but I know you have good plans for me, for my family. Hallelujah. God has good plans. So these trials do come to us to perfect our faith. Okay. The book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, Paul was in prison and was writing a very confident letter. He says, I'm in bonds and uh, I know, and I know, and I know, and I know, I'm persuaded that this shall turn out for my salvation. Being in prison, I would wish that you should understand this, brethren, the Philippians, that the things that have happened to me to be in bonds have rather turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. You see, this, this mindset, a positive mindset, it has turned out for the furtherance of the what? Philippians chapter 1 from verse 12. I know it shall turn out myself. It shall turn out. It will change. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it shall turn out my salvation according to my honest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Nothing. No way. But as always, Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether in life or in death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You see, he was saying that I don't fear anything whatsoever. But everything shall turn out for my salvation. Can you say that statement in a in given situation that you are facing? I know it shall turn out for what? Confession is a part of the deal. I know it shall turn out for my what? Salvation. Positive attitude. He was in jail. And you see, when you take some study, you realize that these powerful episodes 
have changed and have transformed communities. When he was in prison writing them, he did not know the impact. Hallelujah. But he knew one thing, whether in life or in death, Christ shall be magnified in my body. Christ shall be Christ shall be Say it again, Christ shall be When I'm in prison, Christ shall be When in Iraq, Christ shall be Hallelujah When in deep need, Christ shall be And I know it shall turn out my salvation It will work out, it will change Hallelujah you are there, but things are going to change. What you are going through, they are subject to change. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, what I'm going through Amen. is subject to change. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not yet married, like my brother, you say it is subject to what? People, your mom is telling you, when are you getting married? You are four, 35, my son. When are you getting married? We want grandchildren. <laughs> you tell that mom that everything is subject to what? Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever I'm going through is subject to what? Is sub subject to what? Jesus. Speak it as if you are believing it wholeheartedly. Everything I'm going through is subject to change. Hallelujah. Amen. It is there for a while. And there are lessons that I need to pick out of that situation. God has not intended something bad for us. His mindset is always to do us good. He's doing good today for you. Every situation you are going through, God has intended that you may get good out of it. Hallelujah. J Joseph said in Genesis chapter 50, you intended evil, but God turned it around, hallelujah, to bring many people on to life again. What I'm going through, my brother, my sister, what you are going through, school fees not yet there. You have applied for a dead year. <laughs> Things are not there. Don't lose courage. Hallelujah. We, we had one of, he doesn't want us to talk about <laughs> those things, but he's one of the staff close to me. The, the, the father didn't have, he finished, the, the, the girl finished senior four. And it's like senior four, the people started in first term and has been crying. I've been encouraging them. Don't, don't, don't lose courage. Even if it's next year, you are going back to school. And he says, I don't know. Daddy is saying the money is not there. I mean, but recently, two days ago, they called me, hallelujah, that they've got a sponsor who has, who has decided to sponsor that kid and is very free now. He's talking testimonies everywhere. He's sharing that testimony that God has made it. Hallelujah! Amen. I'm telling you, brethren, don't don't ever don't ever think you are defeated. With Christ, we are not defeated. Amen. I have Christ on my side. If he's on my side, I shall not suffer defeat. Let the devil suffer defeat, but for me, I am an overcomer. I am one of them. Hallelujah. They overcame the devil. They overcame him by the blood of? Don't you have the blood of the lamb? Don't you have the blood of the lamb? And then number two, with the word? The word of what? Don't, don't go on saying things are difficult. My uncle didn't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> they overcame him with the blood of the lamb and by the word of their word. Start rejoicing, start dancing along. Say, God is going to do it for us. These things I'm telling you are real. We have one of our sisters here in intercession. He wanted to take back the, the kids. But they didn't have the money. The, the husband is working somewhere, but the money is not forthcoming. And, and the time has come. And he was sort of full. And then after sharing the word, we have intercessions here, sharing the word. And we, you know, we encourage one another. We, we sharpen one another in the word. Hallelujah. 
And then she went in the dorm for the girl was down there. In the morning, she said, God, I thank you because you are beautiful. God, I thank you because you are going to provide. I think my kids are going back. Tomorrow time for today's uh, buying things. And then tomorrow, hallelujah. He starts thanking God and, and dancing around alone. One hour later, she checked on the husband. By night, the husband was saying negative. But when this lady realized that it was a spiritual battle, she started praising God and then giving thanks. And then a later, one hour later, she said, when you called the husband, he said, I have got money here. A hundred thousand is enough to begin off at least. Hallelujah. Amen. And the, the, the girl was very excited. She, she's, she's married officially. He was very excited. He came and said, Pastor, Pastor, can I tell you? Came early in the morning in my office. I want to give you a testimony. Things have worked out. I said, what has worked out? <laughs> this and this and that has worked out. I said, how did you do it? He said, I did A, B, C, D. He says, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So today, you, when you are here, and you are hearing of these things, don't think I'm, I'm just playing a timbre. Okay? Wangi? I know challenges are there, whether you like it or not. We are traversing this land full of challenges. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 33, in the world there are many what? Challenges. There are many troubles, but I have overcome the world, okay? Amplified says, in the world there are many challenges, but <laughs> I have made them of none effect to affect you. Hallelujah! Did you hear that? I've made the, those challenges of none effect. They are not going to hurt you. They are not going to harm you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. So Paul concludes my, my sermon saying that I shall not be ashamed. I will never be ashamed in every situation. Will you be in that position to say, I'm not ashamed of anything? Will you be able, confidently to say, this mountain is going to be leveled completely. And I'm a winner. It may seem impossible, but you must confess it. And Jesus, the high priest of our confession, he will back up what you have said. He will bring it to perfection. He will bring it to come to as you have mentioned. If you say negative thing, Jesus is not going to go be a high priest for negative things. He is only a high priest for positive things. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Amen. Say with me, Father in heaven, this is the time where challenges are abounding. But Lord, you have given us authority over these challenges. They will come, yes, but we shall prevail over them that your name may be glorified. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name. You did not die that the church would, would be uh, uh, made of, of failures. The church is going to prevail. The church is a giant. The church is prevailing every situation in the nation and in nations. The church is prophetic. We shall not suffer setbacks, but shall always advance. We shall see the church moving. The church moving on. Victoriously, conquering, subduing. Hebrews chapter 11 talks of men who subdued kingdoms, territories, through faith. Lord, we ask you,
put this confidence in us that in every situation we may see this, the line of the tribe of Judah raising up to overcome and to become rulers. We shall not be defeated, but we are overcoming. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.